A GPU is one of the most important parts of any computer and without it you simply can't play games. There are many GPUs from different manufacturers but today we mainly have three big players Nvidia, AMD and Intel. In this video however I am focusing only on Nvidia and I'll be ranking every Nvidia graphics card from the worst to the best. And no this won't be one of those basic tier lists where cheaper automatically means worse and the more expensive means better. My tier list will be much more realistic. Each tier will have three sections. For example, in low tier we will have the lowest cards, the mid-low cards and the high-low cards and so on for every level. Hopefully this video will help you choose the right GPU for your next gaming PC. So enjoy the video. Okay. Let's start from the very bottom. These are the kinds of graphics card that can barely run modern games. At best you might play something like Minecraft or CS 1.6. The lowest tier is open by cards like the GT 710, GT 1030 and other office level GPUs. These graphics cards are extremely old and basically useless for gaming. You simply won't be able to run most modern titles on them. I also want to add all the GTX cards from the 500 and the 600 series to this category. Their drivers haven't been properly updated since the dinosaur age and many modern games simply won't launch. Every single one of them has only 1, 2 gigabytes of VRAM which is just critical low for 2026. As a temporary solution just to have something inside your PC, they are fine but that's about it. Now still in this low tier but already a bit better, we have GPUs that can run modern games but only in low settings. These are the legendary budget cards, the GTX 1050, 1050 Ti, GTX 1630, 1650 and also super version. These GPUs are great if you want to build a cheap gaming PC that can run most games in low settings. They are very common on the used market, energy efficient and a full budget build with one of these cards can cost around 100 to 150 dollars if you choose your parts well. They come with 4 GB of VRAM and you can comfortably play games like Fortnite, CS2, Minecraft, even with some shaders. Yes, even Cyberpunk runs on these cards but only on the lowest settings with FSR turned on. Thankfully AMD Stacks works on Nvidia cards too. And yes, if you noticed that I didn't include any GPUs from the 700 and 900 series, you were absolutely right. I decided not to cover them for one simple reason. They are just too old and I don't really have any proper experience with them. These GPUs came out when I was around 7 or 9 years old. Back then I didn't even have a PC, blads. That's how ancient they are. So I don't want to give you any wrong information or talk about cards I barely know. And finally, at the top of the low tier, we have the best GPUs from this category. These are cards that can run modern games like CS2, Minecraft with shaders, Cyberpunk, RDR2 and more. You can expect a fairly stable 1080p experience on medium settings and in some games even high settings. These GPUs include the GTX 1060, 1660, 1660 Ti, 1660, super and 2060. And you might ask my friends, what do they all have in common? They all come with 6 GB of VRAM, of course except for for the GTX 1060 with the 3 gigabytes of version. That's terrible. I would recommend avoiding it entirely. And we all know that for comfortable 1080p gaming on high settings in 2026, 6 gigabyte is already not enough. 8 gigabytes is the real minimum. Among all these GPUs, I would highlight the GTX 1660 Ti and the RTX 2060. The 1660 Ti may have only 6 gigabytes of VRAM, but its performance is generally impressive. It's basically as strong as an RTX 3050 just without DLSS or any ray tracing. On this card you can run most modern games on high settings but not ultra. The RTX 2060 in my opinion is the best GPU in this entire low tier. Even with 6 GB of VRAM it still has the DLSS and some basic ray tracing support. Overall these cards are very solid budget options that can still deliver a good gaming experience. Now let's move on to the middle category and here we have a very interesting picture. The weakest card in the mid tier are the GTX 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080 and the 1080 Ti. And here many of you might ask, why is the 1080 Ti with 11 gigabytes of VRAM placed here? <laughs> 
it's actually quite simple. Like all the cards from the 1000 series, these GPUs are very old and basically outdated for 2026. Of course, all of these cards have at least 8GB of VRAM, which is the minimum standard for now, and it meets the requirements of many new games. But we shouldn't forget that these cards don't have RTX or DLSS support, and because they run on older architectures, they consume more power. Even so, they are very solid for 1080p gaming and can deliver very beautiful visuals with a good FPS. The meat of the mid tier sounds kinda funny, but here we go. In this category, I put GPUs like the RTX 3050, 3060, 3060 Ti, 2060 Super, 2070, and 2070 Super. And yes, it makes perfect sense. These are all cards with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which is really the minimum for modern standards. But here we have a funny thing. All of these GPUs really have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, except for the 3060, which comes in both 8 gigabyte and the 12 gigabyte versions. Personally, I would take the 12 gigabyte version because more is always better, right? And yes, all these GPUs support modern technologies like DLSS and ray tracing, which is very good. Of course, the older 2000 series has weaker DLSS and ray tracing, but it's still there. Next on the list, I decided to put RTX 4060 and 5060 here. They also have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, and the reason I placed them here is quite simple. These GPUs are new and very energy efficient. You can literally buy them brand new in the stores, which is a huge advantage, even if they might be slightly weaker than the GPUs I mentioned earlier. Also, they support all the latest NVIDIA technologies like DLSS and ray tracing, which is definitely puts them a bit higher within the same category. They work really well for 1080p gaming and even go for 2K gaming, which is really impressive. Nice. Alright, now let's talk about the upper middle tier. Here I am putting GPUs like 2080, 2080 Super, 3070 and 3070 Ti. All of these cards have 8GB of VRAM and the situation is pretty simple. They all support RTX and DLSS and other modern technologies. Of course, these graphics cards are really powerful and I could have placed them a bit higher, but the problem is their VRAM. Unfortunately, despite all their power, just 8GB of VRAM really limits their potential. In this same category, I also decided to include 4060 Ti and 5060 Ti. And yes, they also have 8 gigabytes, but there is a catch. Just like the 3060, these GPUs come in two versions. The 4060 Ti and 5060 Ti can be found with 8 gigabytes or even 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is amazing. The 16 gigabytes of version are more than enough even for 4K gaming, not to mention 2K. These higher VRAM versions would also be excellent for video editing or AI work, and I would definitely choose them if I had some extra money, even though they cost a bit more. And finally, 2080 Ti, because it has 11 GB of VRAM, and I like it. Alright guys, now we finally move on to the high tier list, the place where the real top GPUs live. With these cards you basically never have to worry about FPS again, and you can play in 4K without any troubles. As always, we start with the lower high tier, and here we have the RTX 3080, 3080 Ti, and the RTX 4070. Yeah, all of these GPUs are more or less on the same performance level, and come with 12GB of VRAM, and they don't differ too much from each other, but there is one small detail. The RTX 3080 actually has two versions, one with 10 gigabytes and another with 12. And yeah, it's pretty obvious that the 12 gigabyte version is the better choice, because come on, 10 gigabyte is already becoming too little for 4K gaming, while 12 gigabyte is still fine. These GPUs are a bit older, sure, but if you're on a budget, they are still an amazing option. And the 4070, a great GPU that you can still buy brand new in stores. Next, we move on to the mid-high tier, and this one is filled with a lot of cards. Let's start with the RTX 3090, 3090 Ti, 4070 Super, 4070 Ti, and the, the 4070 Ti Super. When I first saw the 4070 Ti Super Pro Max Mega Ultra, I honestly thought it was a joke, like some Frankenstein monster in the GPU world, but no, it actually exists. After that, we also have the RTX 5070 and 5070 Ti. So, what do you need to know 
here, the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti have a massive amount of VRAM, 24 GB, which is the highest in this tier. Cards like the 4070 Super, 4070 Ti and 5070 come with 12 GB, and the 4070 Ti Super Pro Max and 5070 Ti have 16 GB of VRAM. As you can see, the mid-high tier basically guarantees that you can play every modern game in 4K without any problems, especially the 5000 series, which came out recently. They already have their own advantages, like the new DLSS versions and improved ray tracing. And now, the top high tier, the top of the top, the best of the best, and yeah, I won't spend too much time here, because let's be honest, most of us, including me, will probably never buy these GPUs, they're just too expensive. This tier includes the RTX 4080, 4080 Super, 4090, 5080, and 5090. For VRAM, the 4080, 4080 Super, and 5080 all have 16 gigabytes. The 4090 has 24 gigabytes, and the 5090 comes with a crazy 32 gigabytes, blad. It's the same number as my RAM in my PC. Honestly, there is nothing much to explain here, because these GPUs are just too powerful, like extremely powerful. And of course, they are extremely expensive. Only one word describes them perfectly. Overkill, blad. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.